I'm delighted to introduce Governor Yoichi Masui for, of the governor of Tokyo. He was elected as an independent with LDP support on February 9th, 2014. Despite a fierce snowstorm the prior day, he won in a big landslide despite the very low turnout at the polls. He's had several distinguished careers. He served as a member of the House of Counselors for two terms, was chairman of the Committee on Foreign Affairs and Defense, and also had been the Minister of Health, Labor, and Welfare. He became the minister in part because of his book entitled When I Put a Diaper on My Mother, which detailed his experience caring for his aged and ailing mother, and it also explained the obstacles then posed by the Japanese welfare system. The book sold more than 100,000 copies, an amazing total, and established him as an expert in Japan's aging society. Earlier, he had been a frequent guest on such popular talk shows as TV Tackle, hosted by Takchi uh, Katano. The governor separately had been a well-known scholar at Tokyo University, at the University of Paris, and at the Graduate Institute of International Studies in Geneva, and at his own think tank. In addition to all of these achievements, my research has established that the governor is the only elected official in the history of Japan to have had owned racehorses that won two Tokyo Derbies. So that adds to his unusual distinctions. I'm certain that you will find his talk both informative and interesting. Please welcome the governor. Thank you very much, Mr. Ross, for your precise research about my horses. Well, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to speak at your esteemed gathering today. I'm incredibly happy to be here because I love New York. I say this, from, uh, this for two reasons. One is that uh, it truly really reflects the way I feel about this amazing city. If I remember correctly, uh, I don't know how many, I don't remember how many years ago, I came here to meet Madonna. I interviewed <laughs> her. And she kept me waiting a couple of hours. I don't forget about that. But anyway, I love New York. <laughs> Number two reason because uh, it's written all over the souvenirs that uh, I bought for my family, and it's stuck me in my head. <laughs> now, as many of you may know, New York and Tokyo have been sister cities for over 50 years, half century. However, evidence of friendship dates way back to 1912, when Japan gifted the cherry blossom trees that you see in the Sakura Park, and are now scattered throughout New York as a symbol of 100 years of friendship between our cities. Um, this morning, I had the pleasure of planting a new cherry blossom tree to symbolize a further 100 years of friendship with seeds for this tree coming from one of the most famous cherry blossom trees in Japan called Miharu Takizakura, located in Fukushima Prefecture. You see this picture? That's really wonderful, wonderful trees. Uh, Fukushima, as you know, was one of the regions struck by the devastating earthquake and tsunami in March 2011. Five years on, while the effects of this disaster are still being felt 
both physically and emotionally, through the unity of Japanese people, uh, the, the tremendous support from people all over the world. And mostly notably from the United States with initiatives such as Operation Tomodachi, uh, life has slowly yet steadily returned to normal across the region. I'd like to also take this opportunity to thank the Japan society, especially for Mr. Loss, for proactively gathering donations during this period. Your ongoing support is deeply appreciated. Over the years, our cities have shared a special bond. As a capital cities of two great nations that share the mutual value of freedom and democracy, <coughs> It is a bond that I hope to strengthen even further by sharing with you today our strategies and pro-business initiatives to further enhance Tokyo's reputation as one of the most business-friendly cities in the world. Now, the reason, now the reason that I brought up the I love New York slogan uh, earlier is that it's one of the most iconic and successful city branding campaigns of all time. It is instantly recognizable and features on merchandise all over the world. In support of our travel and tourism industries, last year we launched our new slogan, this one, and Tokyo a branding strategy that was inspired by your I love New York. <laughs> As uh, many of you would agree, Tokyo is an open and flexible city full of diverse people, cultures, ideas, and opportunities. So we wanted to come up with a slogan that could reflect this diversity in many ways. Backed by both the private and public sectors, it seems to be working very well so far. The uh, concept of, for this slogan is to connect different things with Tokyo. By adding words or phrases in front of Tokyo, many businesses and organizations are currently using the slogan for promotion, as, uh, as well as for creating merchandise. Um, I'd, I'd be very happy if you're businesses and organizations also use the end Tokyo slogan. On my return back to uh, Tokyo next week, Kirin Beer uh, will you know, cooperate with us and they will sell a beer with uh, Kirin and Tokyo. So that you can make uh, you know, the Japan society in Tokyo, anything that you like. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and if, you, if one of your company would like to, you know, put this mark, uh, you know, the uh, on your merchandise, you can do freely. I don't ask you any credit. <laughs> <laughs> we are currently seeing an unprecedented growth in tourism, with a record number of nearly 20 million tourists visiting Japan last year, putting us well on tracks to achieve a goal of 40 million foreign visitors in the year 2020 and 60 million by 2030. This not only provides a huge boost for local economy, but also huge opportunities for global companies in the travel sector to generate new business leaders by promoting Tokyo as a global tourist destination. As maybe when you come to Tokyo in the Ginza streets, uh, you know, the, these streets are uh, occupied by the Chinese tourists. And the, you know, the couple of years ago, I paid a visit to Beijing, another sister city of Tokyo. And the, you know, I opened the door. At that time, uh, sign of Japanese relations was so bad. So someone should to have to go. So I went there. I shook hands with the leaders of Chinese Communist Party. And he said, well, from today, we'll open the door. So since then, millions 
of Chinese tourists coming to Japan, and they buy many things. They eat in Japanese restaurant, and so that department store, restaurant, the shops pay the taxes to me. So it pays. <laughs> One aspect of our city that we are hoping to promote further is how amazing Tokyo is at night. Also, there are already impressive seasonal light displays. Our vision is to invest even more in permanently lighting up our streets, landmarks, and the waterfront to make Tokyo's night sky as famous as New York, Paris, and London. We are also uh, breathing vibrancy into Tokyo's restaurant and bar scene to turn Tokyo into a city with a nightlife as enjoyable as New York. I met your mayor uh, yesterday and I asked him, you know, how to make uh, nightlife in Tokyo so, you know, fantastic as New York. And the, uh, Mr. De Brezio's answer, one of the answers is, you have the subways 24 hours. So this is one of the reasons. But uh, so I said, uh, I have to learn much about from New York experiences. Uh, this strong tourism growth is creating opportunities for companies from all over the world, not only in the travel sector, but in retail and accommodation too. Our technology sector continues to be <coughs> incredibly strong with American company, companies providing a significant presence. And we are also aiming for Tokyo and the surrounding region to become a global life science hub by designating a strategic zone dedicated to developing products and services that can change the future. Uh, this uh, special center will be already is located in Nihonbashi area near Ginza. Uh, currently, there are over 3,000 foreign companies in Japan, and nearly 30% of those are from the United States, with 70% of all foreign business being located in Tokyo. I truly believe that Tokyo is a place worthy of investment for global companies. I'd like to Thanks to those of you in attendance today who already have operations in Tokyo. And for those who are considering investing in our city, there has never been a better time than right now. Uh, Tokyo provides a consistently strong economic environment and an impressively large market in which it is easy to do business. We are also setting up various public-private partnership funds and openly inviting foreign companies into the market. Thanks to these factors together with an improved inbound investment strategy and 10-year plan to ensure that Tokyo remains one of the world's leading economic and financial centers, Tokyo is ranked very high among cities in Asia-Pacific according to various trusted analytic bodies. For example, Tokyo was just the number one mega city in Asia uh, Pacific for both economic potential and connectivity, connectivity, and number two city overall in the most recent Financial Times, FDI Asia Pacific Cities of the Future Rankings. Tokyo also backed downward global economic trends to attract a peak number of foreign direct investment projects. Uh, Tokyo accounts for 20% of Japan's national GDP, and with a GDP greater than that of its nearest rivals, Hong Kong and Singapore. Uh, Tokyo is aiming to regain its title as Asia's leading financial center. Now, unfortunately enough, this center is located in Singapore. What I'm saying is, get back this center from Singapore back to Tokyo. So there are a number of sectors in Tokyo that we believe offer a lot of promise for international companies. And we are actively inviting foreign business to invest in Japan. In particular, we see a lot of opportunity for sectors collaborating with technology. 
Prime examples of this include the global emerging fields of fintech and medtech. In Tokyo now, we have successfully managed to invite fintech companies, such as US-based companies that has highest circulation of virtual currency with a high degree of blockchain technology, and a UK-based company that have been introducing highly efficient IT payment system throughout Europe. One goal is to combine foreign developed software with Japanese technology and vice versa to create all new service. The city is putting processes in place to attract more international financial forums to Tokyo. And plans are underway for an event this year. Maybe in December, I'd like to invite uh, you know, the experts, economists, entrepreneurs, and the high officials of foreign countries to Tokyo to have this kind of symposium in the forums to show how Tokyo is ready to attract the people from all over the world. In addition, the Tokyo Metropolitan University has recently launched new finance courses for its prestigious business school. Also, in collaboration with Financial Service Agency, we are planning to set up a financial concierge service, which explains complicated Japanese financial laws and regulations, and also acts as an intermediary between the Financial Service Agency and foreign enterprises seeking to set up offices in Tokyo. We are currently implementing a number of initiatives designed to make it easier than ever for foreign companies to set up operations in Tokyo. This includes the creation of one-stop business establishment center uh, that uh, Mr. Yokota mentioned, uh, which unifies the procedures required for companies to establish their operations in Tokyo market as uh, well as system to simplify paperwork and expedite immigration processes for nationals scheduled to work for companies that are approved by the Tokyo Metropolitan Government. We are also placing an emphasis on English language education for Japanese citizens to make it easier for non-Japanese companies to do business in Tokyo. One of the biggest uh, reasons why Singapore is uh, now the center of Asian financial center is their official language is English. Oh, it's not. This is the uh, uh, biggest barrier uh, for the foreign companies to operate in Tokyo. And we are implementing initiatives such as the creation of English villages, which are uh, language education facilities aimed at improving students' communication abilities in an all English environment. These new initiatives, along with many others, will make Tokyo an even more accessible destination in which businesses and their executives can operate, enjoy living with their families, and thrive. In order to make Tokyo a better place to the business, we want to make, <coughs> make the most of the opportunity that hosting the 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games will bring. Our vision is to create a barrier-free games. We will work to ensure that Tokyo is fully accessible for visitors with physical disabilities by investing further in the barrier-free facilities throughout the city. This includes initiative to make public streets around Olympic venues more wheelchair-friendly and to add more tactile paving for the visually impaired universal design taxi and tour buses with wheelchairs lifts. Another of our infrastructure goals is to take a long-term approach by ensuring that the stadium and other facilities that we build are sustainable and can be used by Tokyo community for many years to come. For example, uh, the canoe slalom course will be linked to a neighboring public park to make a recreation area or its rafting and other 
exciting water sports right in the heart of Tokyo, like New York. We are taking steps to ensure Tokyo is one of the world's future smart cities. Firstly, our vision is uh, our vision for Tokyo goes well beyond 2020. Our ultimate goal is Our ultimate goal is, is for 2020 games to leave a legacy, and that legacy is for Tokyo to become a hydrogen-based society to support a cleaner and more sustainable future. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government has set aside over $350 million to promote the adoption of hydrogen-powered cars, and importantly, the fueling station necessary to power them. By 2030, we aim to have a network of 150 fueling stations with 200,000 fuel cell vehicles in operation as part of the public education program. To support this build out, we established a fueling station in March this year and an adjacent showroom that will give citizens a glimpse of the future will open this July. Like many cities around the world, we are placing a priority on demotorizing and turning Tokyo into a congestion-free city. We are already implementing initiatives such as increasing pedestrian zones, expanding bicycle lanes, and introducing bike-sharing programs. In addition, a new bus rapid transit, or BRT, service will be launched in the Bay Area in the year 2019, further enhancing public transportation. BRT will be equipped with advanced operation support technology not seen anywhere else in the world. Buses will be highly safe with universal design qualities, including smooth acceleration and deceleration to prevent falling inside the vehicles, and they will stop next to station platforms without leaving a gap. Moving forward, public transformation will continue to incorporate new technology. Tokyo is also investing heavily in infrastructure for renewable energy, and we have just raised the bar for the city by committing to increase the percentage of energy we consume from renewable sources to 30% by the year 2030. This means uh, moving forward with our pioneering cap and trade program, which was put into effect in the year 2010, 2010 to help large corporations reduce greenhouse gas emissions. However, the city can't make all these changes alone. So we are launching a number of public-private investment funds to show our commitment to policies driven by public-private partnership. These funds exemplify how Tokyo is trying new ways to encourage private capital investment from home and abroad in a bid to combat global warming through financial investment. Although Tokyo has only invested about $37 million, this set the stage for the growth of six energy funds worth over $350 million. Looking ahead, a long-term vision of mine is for Tokyo to be perceived as a city of water. While New York is famous around the world for its waterways, such as New York Bay and the Hudson and East River, what many people don't know is Tokyo is a city blessed with 107 waterways. Uh, in fact, Tokyo Bay and cities for largest rivers have been an integral part of Tokyo's fabric for hundreds of years. This morning, I got a ride on the ferry between uh, Brooklyn and Manhattan that I enjoyed, and the, uh, we are doing the same kind of things in Tokyo Bay. I strongly believe that uh, investing more in our waterfront areas can help to shape the future of Tokyo, such as further utilizing waterways for global events such as marathons, cultural events, uh, riverside fireworks displays, 
and festivals. This is also an exciting time for Tokyo's waterfront areas because the world famous Tsukiji fish market will be unveiled in its new location of Toyosu in this November. November. We are also looking to upgrade our port infrastructures so as to be able to accommodate an increase in the number of larger cruise ships, in particular the world's largest uh, 220,000 tons models that are eager to stop in Tokyo. Investing in Tokyo's waterfront area will revitalize a critical asset of the city and enable the future long-term planning of Tokyo. This will also help with our endeavors to revamp areas of the city that are are in need of revitalization. I draw a lot of inspiration from New York and the incredible transformation of areas such as Brooklyn and uh, Mid Parking District. Just I, I watched this morning uh, with the uh, people of the New York City. Uh, similarly to New York, I believe that the future planning of Tokyo must include every corner of the city. I place great importance on quality of life for the every Tokyo resident, which is my, why I was thrilled when Monocle magazine, British magazine, declared that Tokyo, declared Tokyo the world's most livable city in their 2015 quality of life survey. We are, uh, do you have New York in that list? Uh, <laughs> I can't see where from here, okay? But you check, please. <laughs> um, uh, this is a British magazine, I should say. Uh, <laughs> not, not, not Japanese. We are doing all that we can do to guarantee good quality of life for our citizens. And we believe that this begins with a healthy work-life balance. We are encouraging all companies to embrace a culture where employees have time for their own private lives and time to spend with their loved ones. I just I return back to the, this monocle survey. Uh, why Tokyo is such a livable city? It's at the, the, the price of lunch. If you pay ten dollars at lunch time, you can have the French cuisine, perfect course with uh, a glass of wine. So. <laughs> In New York, it's impossible, just ten dollars. So please come to Tokyo to enjoy <laughs> your lunch. Uh, we place a lot of importance on the people of Tokyo being safe in their everyday lives. However, due to our geographical location, as you know, Japan is prone to experience extreme natural phenomena, including earthquakes and typhoons on a regular basis. Uh, core elements of Tokyo's infrastructure include earthquake resilient, resistant buildings, roads and service facilities, as well as replacement to protect again against storm and tsunami flooding. These investments are fundamental to ensuring that the people of Tokyo are as safe as possible in the event of natural disaster. Uh, we conduct regular evacuation drills and emphasize the importance of stockpiling food supplies in case of an emergency. In addition, in order to further educate our citizens about necessary safety measures, we recently produced and distributed a free disaster preparedness handbook. This one. This is English version, but Japanese version is uh, as small as this half side. Uh, to every household, I uh, printed seven million copies and distributed freely to all households in Tokyo. Uh, and the, now people living in surrounding uh, prefecture are directed by, so you pay one dollar so you can get uh, this uh, one copy. And another thing is, you know, the, uh, I don't give the permission to the developers to build, uh, for example, skyscrapers uh, without the proof that this new building will resist the earthquake 
as big as the earthquake of five years ago, Tohoku. So the, uh, you can come to Tokyo, live in these condominiums and skyscrapers, skyscrapers. I assure you that you are safe. Furthermore, in a, bit to, in a bit to ensure that Tokyo is prepared for many possible terrorist attacks, it's vital to ensure that there is a strong collaboration between the public and the private sectors. We have now established the Anti-Terrorism Partnership Tokyo. This initi initiative is designed to prevent any potential threat to our society by such means as linking video cameras owned by private transportation companies with Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department. We are also introducing a 3D mapping system that is able to identify and analyze buildings and landmarks in Tokyo that may be at risk of terrorist attacks. We also have dedicated special teams in place to protect against cyber security uh, threats. In addition, there is an increase in the amount of international dignitaries visiting Tokyo. We are constructing a new training and response facility for the Tokyo International Airport, ter Airport Terrorism Response Unit near Haneda Airport, the gateway to the, the, the center of Tokyo. These initiatives together with maintaining one of the lowest crime rates in the world resulted in the Economic Intelligence Unit declaring Tokyo as the world's safest city, uh, India 2015 Safe Cities Index, an achievement that I'm incredibly proud of. And the fire is New York again. You have? Okay. <laughs> I'm moving forward. I have no intention to, you know, to compare with uh, two big cities, but uh, this is again the British survey. <laughs> moving forward, we are committed to driving the next step in the city's evaluation as a truly a mature global city by promoting a more inclusive Tokyo where people can enjoy fuller, more balanced lifestyles. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time today to hear about to the change that are happening in Tokyo right now and the opportunities that uh, this presents for your US-based business. From exciting inve uh, investment opportunities for US enterprises to the approaching 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games, and finally to our long-term goals for sustainability, our commitment to making Tokyo the most business-friendly city in the world means now is a better time than ever for our great, two great cities to invest in each other. Uh, yesterday, I met, as I said to you, with Mayor uh, de Brasio, and we spoke about the visions that each of us have for our two cities. While we will surely encounter bumps along the way, through city diplomacy, I hope to share Tokyo's knowledge with many countries and people, and together we will be well placed to overcome any obstacles. As a fellow global superpower, I'm very much looking forward to hearing more about the future plans for New York City and to working together to create a sustainable path toward continued economic success. I believe that the cherry blossoms, trees that line the streets of a city will remain a living symbol of our ever-growing friendship for many years to come. I'll be sure to take plenty of I love New York merchandises back to Japan. And who knows, maybe one day I'll see some end Tokyo t-shirts on the streets here. Thank you very much indeed. You mentioned that Tokyo is implementing a number of incentives and initiatives to make it easier for foreign companies to do business there. Mm -hmm. Just how important are foreign companies to the economy of Tokyo? You gave some statistics yes. about their participation. Mm -hmm. 
you know, the uh, oil suffered from the two decades of deflation, stagflation. And the, as I mentioned, now center of Asian finance is located in Singapore. And uh, many, many foreign companies left Tokyo and Japan. But uh, we are preparing the 2020 games. Right. Uh, battery needs the foreign investments, you know, the, to improve our infrastructures, to uh, construct Olympic venues. So that, uh, you know, without participation of foreign companies in our economy, you know, we cannot recover our economy. And I'm always saying that uh, the year 2020, I mean, the Olympic Games, the occasion of these games will be the best chance and the last chance for our economy. Mm -hmm. So that uh, we, and also we have to change the mind of the people. You know, Japan is shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. You know, has been shrinking since 20 years before. Uh, for example, there are, you know, the many Japanese are working here in New York, but you just check the number of Japanese students who go abroad. The number is decreasing. So it's, it's really the problem for me. Right. When we were young, we really wanted to go abroad to study. Uh, I, I studied at the University of Paris and other university, European universities in the States, so that it was normal for the ambitious younger generation when I was young. But now it's not the case. So we have to you know, change full mind of people, especially in Tokyo. Well, you know, many, many athletes and people will come to the games. Then we have to, you know, the, uh, meet these people. That's the good chance to change the total you know, atmosphere of Tokyo and Japan. Great. Now, what you mentioned about New York and Tokyo cooperating to help each other. Yes. Other than wearing the end Tokyo t-shirts, <laughs> what, what, what can the two cities really do to help each other? Well, for example, I said uh, to Mayor de Brasio yesterday that uh, uh, it took me one hour from the FK airport to my hotel in Manhattan. But uh, Mr. Ross, when you come to Tokyo next time, you arrive at uh, Haneda Airport right. to see me. It takes only 20 minutes wow. from Haneda Airport to my office located in Shinjuku. But before, it took 14 minutes. So now I have, more precisely, 19 minutes. <laughs> and the, why I made that? There are three policies. One is the development of efficient public transportation, the subways and the buses. I, I mentioned BRT. The second is policies con controlling very efficiently all the traffic. But third is most important one. We are making, in your brochure, uh, you know, the, uh, in the book, you can find the pages later, you can consult the, this. Uh, propaganda books of Tokyo, right? <laughs> and uh, we are making three ring expressways. The last March, uh, the last March, I mean, the last year, we finished uh, the construction of the most inner circle uh, highway. Sorry. And this uh, link, Ikebukuro, Shinjuku, Shibuya, and Haneda Airport. And, you know, going because of this new highway, you know, you have to pay, of course, but, you know, the number of car penetrating into the center is reduced only by 5%, but uh, congestion rate, traffic jam, is reduced 50%. Wow. And then we are making second larger cycle, the third larger cycle. For Japanese audience, I say, Chuo Kanjo Sen, second is uh, uh, Gaikando, the third is Kenodo. So there are these three kind of links, you know, expresses. I will finish construction by the year 2020. Uh -huh. And when you come to Tokyo in four years, then, you know, the 
we have six million cars getting into the center of Tokyo per day. But I'd like to divert half of this car, three million, this outer skirt, the outer area, with pricing systems. If you go this side, you pay this. So people will go there. So that the number of cars coming into the center will be reduced to 50%. That yeah. means there is no traffic jam. So please come to now, even now, almost no traffic jam at all. So that this kind of uh, pricing system and construction that I, s I said to your mayor, mayor that you can learn from me. <laughs> and the, but another thing is housing policies right. of which uh, Mr. De Brasio is so proud of is uh, uh, this I can't uh, implement uh, in Tokyo. You know, I just watched the waterfront area today, sure. and you have the, so many kind of uh, apartment houses. And according to the uh, uh, New York City uh, authorities, that, uh, for example, 20% of apartment houses, one billion, should be uh, for the affordable, you know, the, uh, right. uh, the price. And uh, this is very good thing. I'd like to do the same thing, but uh, in Tokyo, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. So there are many, many uh, things that we can uh, you know, learn each, each other. There are so many other, other things. But uh, economically and financially uh, spoken, New York is much advanced than Tokyo. Uh, to tell the truth, uh, Tokyo is so underdeveloped in this area because of 20 years stagnation. That means we have big chance for you to invest. This is not developed areas. You know, so you can develop a vast market and you can make money in Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. We'll now open it to the audience. If you would raise your hand, we'll try to recognize everyone in the limited time that we have. And please uh, identify yourself, and please. And identify yourself, yes. Was that a hand going up in the... Uh, yes, miss. Lady? Yes, you. You. Yes, please. There's a microphone. Uh, yeah. Microphone will be coming. It's coming. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Uh, my name is Akira Yokozeki. I'm Japanese. Uh, living in New York. Um, actually, not really. Out. I used to be a Tokyo resident. Uh -huh. And I uh, established a New York to uh, Tokyo club who used to live in Tokyo. So uh, Tokyo um, governor, there's a, a comment from a voice from a Tokyo residents, and only Tokyo residents can respond and can participate um, how Tokyo could be even better. But I would like to uh, make some comments. This time, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, mm. It is very um, outstanding, and I was so um, fascinated with your presentation today. But uh, whenever I go to Japan with a view of non-Japanese, there's so many things that, that I can't really understand because everything is written in Japanese. Uh -huh. So please make uh, English translation or any other language except Japanese happen as soon as possible, especially before the Olympics coming. Mm. So I would like to make Tokyo more universal and global. Yes. So please make it happen. Yes. That's my comment. Thank you very much. Uh, when was the last time when you come? You went to Tokyo? Uh, in March. Oh no, in February. Sorry. Uh, this year. This year. Yeah, but uh, maybe you noticed uh, we are changing very very rapidly. Uh, for I example, do. in Shinjuku Station, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, every sign will be written not only in Eng Japanese, English, and the Korean, and Chinese. And huh. we are changing all over Tokyo now, very rapidly, by the, the Olympic Games. Uh, but another thing is uh, uh, you have the smartphone, and the, we have special applications. And uh, this will give you the uh, simultaneous translation capabilities of 29 languages. And now our, you know, the uh, technology permits you, y you just put on, if this is a sake bottle, this is written in the uh, name of sake, you put your smartphone, and on your smartphone, 
English translation will be done automatically. Mm -hmm. So the, by the year 2020, you come to Haneda Airport and put this, and uh, even if it is, it is written in Japanese, you can get uh, English translation. But your, your comment is uh, uh, really a good co comment and a point that uh, we are really making this change as rapidly as possible. So the, I promise you that when you come to Tokyo next time, please come to see me in Shinjuku in my Love office. <laughs> at least around my office, everything will be changed. <laughs> <laughs> Great, looking forward okay. to it. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. <laughs> uh, gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Governor, thank you very much for your great presentation. Um, and first of all, I would like could you, to... Could you please identify oh, yourself? My name is Katsuo Takeda of Morgan Stanley yes. uh, from Sapporo. Uh -huh. uh, I would like to... Uh, first of all, I would like to express my sincere respect of, for your decision to accept the debris from a disaster area in Tohoku. Thank you. And uh, my question is a slightly... Maybe a difficult question, but uh, about uh, energy policy. Yes. Uh, may I ask what is your vision of Japanese uh, energy policy as the biggest uh, energy consumption city uh, in the Tokyo? Yes. You know, it is really delicate, uh, politically speaking, uh, uh, question. But uh, for the moment, uh, without nuclear energy, we are managing uh, in the sense that we will you know, I don't say the precise figure, but we increase uh, very rapidly the percentage of renewable energy uh, and produce our energy in Tokyo. That means solar panel. If now you put on your roof of your houses, the solar panels, I'll give you the subsidies of uh, more than one million yen, for example. Uh, so this is a kind of I incentive for the people to use renewable energies. And uh, to give uh, appreciation to the uh, former efforts of Tofuku area, because nuclear plant is located in Fukushima and Niigata, we heavily dependent on these nuclear plants for our electricity. So that I created uh, new funds supported by our government in Tohoku. We are in Tohoku, we are uh, three or four different uh, renewable energy uh, sources. One is solar panel uh, in, in Tohoku, uh, Fukushima, and another is wind uh, power in Aomori. And the another is uh, bioenergy from Niigata. So we are doing, in terms of supply, you know, giving the money and creating, uh, very, uh, you know, setting up the funds to expand our efforts to these devastated areas uh, to create energies. And demand side is concerned, you know, I'm asking the, the people of Tokyo, just switch off the lights and everything to save the electricity. And for the moment, this policy, uh, Makes sense. But uh, in the coming years, especially uh, the year 2020, because of the games, we badly need electricity. Uh, but uh, for the moment, without depending on nuclear uh, power, we can manage. But in the long term, 20 years to come or 30 years, uh, I'm not so sure. But so we are preparing various kind of policies to cope with uh, this shortage of electricity. Please. Good evening, Governor. Thank you very much. It's a real privilege to have you. My name is uh, Alexander Grijalva. I'm a cybersecurity director at mm -hmm. a medical provider here in New York City. Yes. Actually, my question is not about cybersecurity, but rather uh, Prime Minister Abe has made it a, a priority to bring in more working women into the workforce. Um, one of the big things is the shortage of daycare centers. And yes. in fact, in September, Bloomberg published that the waiting list had increased by 8%. Mm. Um, is there something your government is doing in order to bring in more women, working mothers or even uh, working fathers with families, young children, 
to uh, make daycare more uh, more available to to working families? Yes. Now, actually, frankly speaking, the Mr. Abe is now copying my policies uh, in the truth, <laughs> yes. And uh, <laughs> no, we are friends, we are always, uh, uh, it's uh, Mr. Abe, we are, you know, you know <laughs> discussing it. But uh, no, you know, the, uh, uh, quite often we uh, over telephone, we asked and uh, the government uh, asked me to help them because the senatorial election is coming, uh, they have to win. Uh, but for example, uh, one third of employees uh, in Tokyo government, it's women. Hmm. And the high ranking of, the percentage of high ranking officials in Tokyo Metropolitan government is 60, uh, women, uh, female, 16 <laughs> percent. But uh, in national government, only two percent. I always say to Mr. Abe, please follow me. We're 16, two percent. But private sectors, uh, private companies, only six percent. Uh -huh. So Tokyo government is so advanced. And uh, for example, deregulation is one of the most important policies of mine. Because I don't like to ask taxpayers to pay more. But deregulation makes sense because four problems come from the, you know, the really high price of land, real estate in Tokyo. So the, you cannot have the land to establish a daycare or nursery or a kindergarten and everything. So that I asked the government to degrade the, the laws concerning the public uh, parks. Now we are making daycare centers for the children, for the elderly person in the public park. Mm -hmm. Now it's possible. And we started this uh, uh, very recently, one in Arakawa, Shioiri Koen, Shioiri Park, another is Setagaya, and another is uh, Nishioi. So the, uh, just for the last uh, couple of months, uh, uh, the number of, for the kids uh, the place for the kindergarten is increased by 600 places. So this is one thing. And in this uh, autumn, I will open the daycare center for the kids in the city hall. Uh -huh. And uh, I open uh, not only for the, our employees, but for the companies near Shinjuku, so they can also bring. And uh, another good thing is, uh, you know, they come directly to the center, and they can have the breakfast there. Because if you prepare the breakfast and everything, it takes time, and you have to commute with such an, uh, you know, the train or the, the, the passengers. But you can come very, very uh, quickly to the center. You can have the breakfast in our city hall. And anyway, I'm drastically increasing the number of daycare for, the, for the, the kids. And also, the, we, ha, we have just published the white paper on women, Tokyo women. This is a fast challenging, uh, you know, the plan. Uh, neither national government nor other local community had done. So that uh, we analyzed everything concerning the situation where Tokyo women are located, uh, are placed. For example, commuting time, you know, the average time is uh, uh, one hour and 10 minutes, 17 minutes. So go and return, that makes a double. But in New York, maybe 45 minutes, in Paris only 30 minutes. And this is really the barrier for women to go to work. And the, I'm now, proposing to make uh, weekends from two to three, three days. So, the, so that uh, you know, the people can work and uh, lead a comfortable life with families. So anyway, we are doing many, many things. This is a political issue. I know that uh, uh, we are already uh, implementing many, many policies to cope with this problem. Thank you very much. Questions? Sir. 
Yes, please. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Taka from Beautiful Earth Group. So we're currently building a green ryokan, uh, like a Japanese style hotel around New York. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to ask how much opportunity is there to work with companies in Tokyo for projects in New York? You mean uh, for foreign uh, workers in, in accommodation? Uh, Sorry, yeah, like, for example, if we wanted to hire like an interior designer firm in Tokyo for projects in New York, is, that, is there like a prog program to facilitate that or to ease that? For the moment, we have not established the concrete system to uh, you know, answer this request, but uh, uh, we can do that. We can do that. So if you can propose me uh, this kind of system, it will be convenient for you and uh, for us. But you know the so the uh, our target is also uh, <coughs> our target is including this kind of system. That so please uh, tell me later or tell me to our uh, you know the uh, consulate or general people and uh, I will study that. Okay. And we have time for one last question, perhaps right there. Uh, gentlemen. Hi, my name is uh, Go Katayama uh, mm. with Potent and Partners. I'm an energy consultant here in the city. Um, 1964 Olympics brought the image of the Shinkansen, yes. bullet train, which was amazing. Um, 2020 Olympics, I'm wondering what sort of legacy are you hoping to leave at the hydrogen society? Um, when I look around the world, hydrogen, it, Iceland, um, but I don't hear a lot of excitement for hydrogen in the US. So I'm wondering what makes you so bullish on hydrogen at the same time? Um, and the 2020 kind of the following Olympics from 1964. Thank you. Yeah, before directly answering to, uh, to your question, there is, you know, the, uh, the 1964 Olympic Games, this is just after the World War II. The Japan was devastated, and we badly needed the economic growth, and we did, uh, you know, the, uh, achieved the economic uh, prosperity, so the, of which the symbol is Shinkansen. For example, but uh, as I told you, the, uh, the the our goal for the 2020 games is uh, not uh, economic growth. Rather, I'd like to say, uh, you know, the matured society uh, with you know the affluent society with leisure time, you know, with uh, the time that you can share with your families and uh, so that so-called work-life balances. So that's. Uh, Te technologically speaking, I compare with, Shin with Shinkansen, this hydrogen society. So the CO2 emission is zero, zero for the new cars, right? And the, for example, we have the athlete village, which will be located in the waterfront. After the games, that will convert into the new town of 6,000 uh, households. There, uh, I'd like to make a hydrogen new town where you can only cars with hydrogen fuel cell vehicles can enter. And also, always electric supply system will be done with hydrogen. And this is new technology, and uh, that will, you know, the, uh, uh, give some kind of good initiative for the Japanese em enterprises to have newly products with hydrogen uh, power. So that uh, this is one of the symbol that we, you know, the, if you check the air, we, we have the clean air in Tokyo, but when I, each time I go to Beijing, so dirty. So this is the difference. So uh, such an uh, environmentally friendly city is my goal. So we will achieve that. And this may be the legacy of the 2020 games. Thank you. I think we should thank the government. Arigatou gozaimasu.